there, my name is Irene, and in this video, we're going to learn about slicing geometry in order to deform it. So let's get to it. Okay, so my titles are getting more and more creative as we go, but that's really because I just <laughs> don't have any other way to explain what we're going to be doing. So in a previous video, I showed you how you can fold geometry. That is, create lines in faces that will allow you to fold those faces to create 3D objects. So what I want to show you here is a similar technique, but this time using it with 3D objects in order to introduce complex modifications. So let's get started by modeling a simple geometry. In this case, it's going to be a banquette. So what I'm going to do here is bring in a reference image. That's going to be my banquette JPEG. And if you want to know more about how to draw geometry using a reference image, you can check my previous video, but I'm going to go to a front view in this case. No, actually, I'm going to go to a right side view. Yes. And I'm going to place my banquette. I don't care about the size right now. Again, watch the video if you want to know what I'm talking about. Uh, so I'm just going to eyeball the size of my banquette. Let's say I'm just going to use this one here. Uh, and let's say that I want the height of my seat to be 20 inches, let's say. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to go 20 inches, enter. I'm going to resize the model because I don't have anything else in this file. So I don't have to worry about, you know, resizing the entire uh, model itself. Okay. And now I'm going to start just by drawing the profile of my banquette. In order to use this technique, you want to avoid adding way too much detail to the geometry. The more simple the geometry is, the better. So I am going to avoid things like, for example, these curved edges or adding a ton of detail. So I'm just going to keep it to the straight outline that makes up the shape. And then I'm going to use my right arrow key to align it there and then there. Okay, perfect. So that's my banquette detail. I can delete my reference image and I'm going to bring this guy to the origin just because I'm I'm a neat freak and I like things to be neat. All right. So let's say that I just want to push pull my banquette. So I'm going to go push pull. And how long do I want it to be? Let's say that I just want it to be, I don't know, like five feet long. Sure. No, six feet. Yes, that looks better. So what I want to do here is be able to introduce a lot of detail into this very simple shape. Basically, I want to create a banquette like this. Well, Maybe not exactly like that. That's really complicated. I want to create a simple version of that. What I want to do is I want to be able to change some parts of these extruded profile while keeping others the same. So basically the idea of this technique is that the same way that when we were working with a single face, we were drawing lines to cut that face in order to be able to fold it. Here, we're going to slice this banquette so we can just modify the individual segments that make it. So the easiest way to do this, because we're working with an extruded profile, all we really need to do is pick up one of the profiles at either end. So I'm going to pick this guy. You do not need to select the face of the profile. So I'm actually going to go control plus shift and click on the face to unselect it. And now what I'm going to do is go M for move, pick up my profile, control to make a copy, and I'm going to take it all the way to the end of the extrusion. So that's going to give me a beginning and an end. And now we're going to use slash value to add, to add additional cuts. So I'm going to go slash end maybe. Yeah, that's going to be enough. You can make as many slices as you want. Just keep in mind that the more slices you have, the more detail you're going to be able to introduce. And this is where the fun begins, because now I can start freestyling my geometry to make it whatever shape I want it to be. And because I have these slices, what they're going to do is they're going to make it so the changes that I do remain within just the one slice that I'm changing. So let's say that I want to start by bringing this edge in. Like, I don't want to have this little corner because, you know, when people go to sit on the banquette, they're going to like hit their like shins against the this edge and they're going to hurt themselves. So check it out. I can just select this edge and for move and bring it in. And ooh, things are starting to take shape. Let's say that I want to make it even more interesting. I want to bring this guy also in a little bit. Let's say that I want to have a little bit of like a curve at the beginning of my banquette. Well, same thing. I can select the lines of the formation and I can just bring them in. See? Pretty cool. Uh, let's say, for example, that I also want my banquette to have a little bit of like a border down. Well, same thing. I can select this guy and bring it down a bit. See how I am starting to customize my geometry? Uh, let's say that I actually want the back here to be much taller and then it kind of goes down a little bit. So I'm going to bring this guy up a lot. There you go. Let's say something like that. 
okay? So that is gonna be my first slice change. And now basically what we are going to be doing is we're gonna continue going slice by slice. So I started with my first slice and then I'm gonna go next slice, next slice, and so on and so forth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to speed up through this process. I will only stop if I want to highlight something specific so you can just see the fun part of it. So I will see you in a second. Cheers. Well, that was short-lived. One thing that I want to point out is that the changes that you do to your slices don't necessarily need to happen just in the axis that the slice has been created. So for example, I can select these edges here and I can move them in red if I want to. Like it is entirely up to you which kind of modifications you're going to be doing to your slices. So I just wanted to make sure to highlight that. As you can see, now we have quite the complex geometry and I can make it even more complex because so far all of the deformations that I did have to do with just kind of like moving geometry. So whether it's lines or points or faces, but keep in mind that there's other deformations that you can do. I can, for example, rotate geometry. So if I want to do that, what I would recommend is once again, same as when we were doing the selection to stretch the uh, baluster, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my top view and I am going to go to parallel projection and turn x-ray vision on just to be on the safe side. And I'm going to make a selection and then check this out. I can come here and say up arrow key to make sure that my rotation is on blue axis. And I can say, well, I want to curve this guy a little bit and then I can unselect these edges here and then say, okay, and then we're gonna do exactly the same thing, but we're gonna rotate this guy a little bit more. And then I'm going to unselect these guys. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna rotate again and so on and so forth. Voila, by the end of the process, I have now a curved banquette. So you can really go crazy with this one. Again, in the future, we're going to learn that there are extensions that actually facilitate this. But one thing that I find really important is making sure that you understand the fact that even if you don't have access to extensions, whether it is because you don't, you can't afford the extensions, or maybe you're working with a computer that has some kind of firewall protection that uh, your company basically doesn't let you install anything. So if you have to work just with SketchUp, you can still create pretty complex geometry. You just have to be a little patient. So to finish my beautiful, crazy custom baguette, I'm going to right click here and we're going to use the same soft and smooth edges that we learned in the previous video. And once again, if you want to control how many lines are actually being hidden, see like for example, here I, st I still can see this guy, here I can still see this guy, and I can still see this guy over here. You can either try turning on soft and cleaners or you can just increase the degrees. See, so it's soft. There you go. I just wanted that guy to disappear. And when I finish, look at this. It's better than nothing. <laughs> and with that, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you found that uh, helpful. If you did, by all means, give it a like, maybe subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to add them in the comments. But otherwise, thank you very much for joining in. Thank you very much for sticking through and I will see you in the next one. Bye.